joining us on this edition of Clubcast. Before I get started, I want to thank all of our donors, our sponsors, our community, all of our leaders who take a stake in the youth's lives. In our community in St. Lucie County, there are so many great things happening, and it's all because of all the partners that are working together to ensure that our youth have the best places to be. They can uh, be in great programming, whether it's the Boys and Girls Clubs or all the other great uh, nonprofits across St. Lucie County, and we couldn't do it without any of you. So thank you for that. We're going to continue to work hard, be innovative. We're going to continue to uh, stay focused on our mission, our vision, and we're going to always show our values. That's always going to shine through no matter what we do. Today I have a very special guest, and I tell you, and I've told her and I've told many people that I've been stalking her for a long time because I knew the quality that she was going to bring to our organization was going to take us to the next level. So please help me in welcoming Dr. Pamela Wellman. Well, thank you, Will. Thank, thank you. I appreciate you. that. Well, Dr. Wellman, I know that you're so used to being in front of the camera and you enjoy talking about all the wonderful things that you have done in your career, which I think uh, the community should understand some of those great things that you've done so they really get the true sense of why um, I was stalking you all that time <laughs> to become part of Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Lucie well, County. Well, Will, I'd be happy to share some things with you. I think it would be a bit much to say I'm excited about talking about <laughs> myself, uh, which is not quite true, but I'd be happy to share. Uh, first of all, I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, graduated from Penn State University and have been in workforce education and educational administration my entire life. I've worked in higher education, I've worked at the college level at Penn State in Pennsylvania, also at Indy River State College as a vice president. I've been a school principal, um, I've been a vocational director, I've been a teacher trainer, I've done a number of things, but it's always been about youth. It's always been about youth development, and particularly in, in the arena of workforce development and workforce readiness. And what I mean by that is everyone coming through our school system is preparing to go into the world of work, whether they leave directly from high school and go into the trades, or whether they leave graduate school and go into the professional fields. That's work. <laughs> Ultimately, everyone goes to work. And um, so my commitment there has been working with young people and helping them be prepared, be prepared for the world ahead, whether it's higher education or directly into the workforce. Well, I mean, if, if our listening audience doesn't get why you are the chief operating officer for Boys and Girls Clubs, now they do. And it's been a pleasure because uh, you were also on the board for Boys and Girls Clubs, and it was a nice transition. Um, because you were going to be the next chair for, after our current chair, you were going to be the next chair. And I remember having our first conversation <laughs> with you. And uh, what I liked about our conversation, it wasn't about prestige, it wasn't about money. It was about what was going to be best for the youth in St. Lucie County. And as we had this open dialogue, some good banter, going across talking about our three, our, our three pillars, our three main priorities. And, and, I, and I've stuck with that over the last couple years uh, because we could find ourselves being all over the board, just taking on tasks that really are not in our lane. But we focus on three things. One is uh, making sure that our clubs are world class. And what I mean by world class is I'm going to simplify this. I'm talking about having computers that look like the computers that kids are using in our public schools and our private schools, having equipment that makes sense, having a club that when a young person leaves school that they can't wait to get to Boys and Girls Clubs because it meets the kids where they're at. It's, it's items that they're used to having or maybe not used to having, but the quality is there. Then, Dr. Wellman, we're going to talk about our enriching programs. We're going to talk about a little bit of 
our programs and the approach that we're taking and the partners that we're working with across, I'm not even going to say St. Lucie County because right. we're going north and south on this thing. We're, we're talking to colleges. We're working with colleges. Um, and then the last thing we're going to talk about is our workforce readiness, which is which is something that is near and dear to me. I know it's near and dear to you because that's that's something that you, uh, that's a field that you really worked with mm -hmm. throughout your whole life. And I like the way you framed it. You said, no matter what the kids are going to do or the children or the teens are going to do, eventually it's going to lead to work. So if they decide to grad go to graduate school or if they get into trades, they still have to go to work no matter what or raise a family. Okay. And that's what uh, we're going to do. So let's start, let's start talking about, um, it's been, uh, you've been with us just over 60 days. And uh, let's talk about like that world-class club experience that you expect as a chief operating officer. Well, thank you, Will. Um, you mentioned uh, my board participation. I've been on the board of directors for the Boys and Girls Club, St. Lucie County, for just over four years. And so I watched you, I watched you, and I stalked you as well, and, and I was so intrigued by your passion and your vision, you know, and, and um, so I knew that my commitment to the board was what I wanted because I wanted to be a part of that energy. And so when you approached me about the uh, chief operating officer's position, as you said, you and I had a conversation about how can I best serve Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Lucie County? Was it as a board member, soon to be the chair? or was it as a staff member in this key and, and critical position? And ultimately, um, we made the decision that it would be as chief operating officer, and I think it was a great, a great decision for me. And one reason for that is, again, your vision. Uh, you talk about world-class clubs, meaning safe, safe environments for our youth, um, places where they can learn and grow, and, and, and that's what we're all about. We, we have uh, very low uh, per pupil ratio to our adults so that the students are always the kids are always being well supervised um, and they're they're happy when you see them get off their buses we actually see <laughs> exactly what you described I mean, they're, they're virtually running we have to say stop running they're running to get to their clubs they're running to get with their staff members who have a real personal interest in how their day was you know, want to, they want to see and applaud the work that they did throughout the day in school. And then what we do is we pick up on that. They have some downtime, but we also have a lot of fun in reinforcing the learnings and the activities and things that they participate in school by taking them, in many cases, on a whole, new, a whole additional uh, level. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I want to I stay on that whole, you know, when a kid... Or one of our teens, or ch children. I've heard somebody tell me once, "Stop calling them kids. They're children <laughs> or teens." And um, when they do get off that bus, and you see the excitement mm -hmm. of them going into a building that makes sense for a kid. I mean, we're you know we're in 15, and we appreciate our partnership with St. Lucie Public Schools. Mm -hmm. but we're in 15 of those schools, and we've been with. In this partnership for over 20 years with the school district. And when I tell you our partnership is strong, it is stronger than it has ever been. And um, when you look at our clubhouses, you and I talk about all the time, you know, we want these clubs to not only meet the needs of the kids, we want to meet the needs of the staff as well. We want our sponsors and donors, we want everyone to be able to come in and say that's a quality program happening there based on not just the safety protocols in place, which is our number one priority in terms of our buildings, but also that the cleanliness of the buildings are up to par and that we're investing in those items. We, uh, we literally, and I won't mention any names now because we're in the middle of some campaigning, mm -hmm. um, we're going to be opening up another Boys and Girls Club um, on Martin Luther King Drive over in Fort Pierce area. And that's exciting to me because that's going to be a world-class teen club where teenagers are going to have a good time learning the trades, learning how to be a productive citizen, learning those soft skills mm -hmm. that people talk about, they want to see out of teenagers. Mm -hmm. But then we're not going to neglect 
that's going to be a beautiful 12,000 square foot building, but we're not going to neglect all the other buildings, right? We got Correct. We have our building in Port St. Lucie where we already got our first $50,000 to renovate it because we want to make sure that we are giving our young people experience, good world-class experience. I want to talk about um, our programs. I want to save the... I'm going to call the best for last for me in the moment that I am in today is that world-class experience. I'm sorry, the, um, the workforce readiness experience that we're providing for our kids. But I want to talk about our life-enriching programs, you know, our, our passport to manhood, our um, other programs that we provide our young people um, that are working in our clubs. And I noticed that you have Back to Zero. Do you want to talk about so, that? So this is all about programming, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure. I, I do want to share this because I think our partnership with Dr. Joy is huge. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we're working on, and we have been for a few years now, is figuring out how do we get our young people back to zero, we don't know what's going on at home. We don't know what's going on at mm -hmm. school. We don't know what's going on in their little minds. And so everyone is unique. And what I'm enjoying about this uh, easy to read book for our, our young children is that they get to figure it out. They get to self-regulate on how they get back to zero. The other uh, great thing about um, this getting kids back to zero is working with our staff mm -hmm. because sometimes our staff have lives. I mean, all the time they have lives, but sometimes we got to make sure we're not part of the problem with our young people coming in. Maybe we're bringing something in that happened to us at home. So, and working with Dr. Joy, it's been uh, remarkable in terms of working with the youth, but then working with the staff as well. well what's been real encouraging to me regarding Dr. Joy is to to watch on screen kids from various ones of our clubs reading uh, along with Dr. Joy yes. and getting excited about their reading uh, with her, you know. And then in addition to that program with the uh, kids or the youth, she also has a parent training program. As yes, well. so and, that, and that's important because we got to connect. We got to connect the dots. And connecting the dots is essential. A, a lot of the programs that we offer, we also have parent components where parents know what's going on. Parents are given oftentimes materials that they can carry on some of those kinds of experiences at home. Parents ask us sometimes, you know, for assistance in how they may be able to keep that excitement going when they have the, uh, their children at home. And so our staff does an excellent job yes. of keeping our parents informed of the various programs as well as making certain that they feel a part of it. No, you're there. absolutely right. I, I want to talk about a couple of programs that we have. We work with Indian River State College in terms of some business opportunities. We're working with Kaiser University with some science and some math. The kids really enjoy doing that. I do want to give a, um, a, a nice plug out to Andy Treadwell, who we've been great partners for a long time with, the, with uh, Indian River State College, but he does just a great job at facilitating uh, just some great opportunities for our young people. Uh, Dr. Moore as well, you know, who leads the outfit across the county or across the Treasure Coast. Also want to give a shout out to um, Leslie Kristoff, the president of the Port St. Lucie uh, campus for Kaiser, who has open arms. Have, she's actually is our passport chair, who's mm -hmm. done some remarkable things, but also have included Boys and Girls Clubs in a lot of great uh, opportunities that's happened for our teenagers. And then we go down to Emory Riddle. I want to talk about that one, too, because this is a fun, exciting new opportunity that our kids, our teenagers, are getting to do with drones. You can speak to it, or I can speak to it. Uh, where do you want me to start? Well, <laughs> you mentioned I can tell before, you we just started recently. With, with the drone program. With the drone right. program. The drone program with Emory Riddle, uh, they actually have a professor that comes here and work side by side with our instructor to teach the, the kids on operating drones. And they have, um, they have some, some theory involved and they have some practical involved and you should see them, uh, you probably have. 
uh, as excited as they get because of this whole new opportunity. A lot of people have never seen a drone or especially operated the drone. When these kids are done, these youth are done, they'll actually sit for uh, FFA certification. F I think it's FFA, I'm sorry. Uh, certification uh, so that they would actually be certified uh, drone operators. Well, what I like about the whole, and we got a, about a minute or so uh, before we go to commercial, but what I like about the whole drone piece is that it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And what I like about our programs at Boys and Girls Clubs is we're not trying to fit every kid in one bucket. We're, we have, I want to say, 15 to 20 kids or teenagers that are, that are interested right. in this program. And we're wanting to make sure that that, that interest, we keep sparking it. And, and maybe half of them will get certified. But if they get certified, there's an opportunity from a workforce readiness standpoint where these kids can actually take the journal and go take pictures for... Um, just a variety of different companies oh, and businesses. And you said it's key. Um, in terms of the kids, we address the kids' interests. <laughs> we don't, we're not stuck with any formal, stiff kind of a curriculum because I'm from the public school background, so yeah, I can exactly. say that. We can be adaptable. We can, we can offer three and four or five or more programs at a time based on the interest of our, the, the kids that we serve. So, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to go on a quick commercial break. And uh, we're going to just show you some other opportunities that Boys and Girls Clubs has across the country. These are more than just the sounds of a safe place to go after school. These are the sounds of interest being ignited and of mentors making an impact. The sounds of tutoring and tech and health and fitness and arts and music. At Boys and Girls Clubs, we don't do just one thing. We do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid who comes through those doors. Because whatever it takes is what it takes to build great futures. Great futures start here. I hope you really enjoyed that commercial. That is happening in your community here in St. Lucie County. And I will put out a quick plug for my neighbors in Indian River, uh, Indian River County, as well as Martin County. Um, we are all in this together for our youth. So Dr. Wellman, let's continue on. Uh, I wanna finish a little bit back on some of our programs because I think there's this this idea that at Boys and Girls Clubs that we're just babysitting sometimes or we're just doing homework help with the kids. But I tell you, there was a program, and, and I don't even know what you would call the program, that happened to me, my experience just recently. I had an opportunity to sit with a couple of uh, teenagers and a staff member, and we were playing Uno. What a great experience that I had. I had in my time with Boys and Girls Clubs, I had not done that with any, I've done small, excuse me, pieces, but I haven't done it to the level where I had to be fully engaged for a long UNO game. <laughs> and I tell you, some of the programs that we're teaching our kids is those soft skills, even in the game of UNO, teaching them to be able to keep, if they didn't win, how they would handle their emotions. And just to watch the interaction with the teens is what we're about. We're teaching our young people to be respectful, to be responsive in a correct way, whether things are going your way or not going their way. Um, I was so impressed with uh, one of our staff, Javon. He, wa he uh, was asking the, the young teens about their career choices, wanting to know what was going on, and... I'm just trying to win, which <laughs> I did win. Yeah. But they were focused, the staff were focused on 
the whole mm -hmm. teenager, mm -hmm. what they were going through. And it was just amazing just to watch that whole process going through. And then we had other staff that were working in groups of five and six with the teenagers. And every week I see more teenagers coming. And that's a testament of the Miss Cynthia's, the Miss Rashida's, mm -hmm. our, our area directors, our club directors, just everyone coming together to make sure that the kids are getting what they need. And, and I know as an educator, mm -hmm. uh, that has to be exciting to you. It is, it is very exciting. And you hit on a real key thing as well. The youth are, were excited and interested in the game. And they were learning almost through osmosis yes. the kinds of skills that we want them to learn. We talk about work readiness. Uh, you ask any employer in this county or the, you know, throughout the, the country, and they will tell you that the kinds of skills they want, whether it's entry level or professional level, are those soft skills. Being able to be a good loser, being able to accept uh, constructive criticism, you know, um, not always having to be right, you know, those kinds of things you, you, you need in no matter what profession you choose to, to go into. And so the employers will say, look, you teach those, the schools, the Boys and Girls Clubs, enforce them wherever, send us employees that possess those kinds of skills. And so our staff do a phenomenal job of reinforcing those, those skills and teaching those skills through basketball, you know, we have, through golf, <laughs> through uh, any number of things, through drones, through virtual reality. You know, we haven't really right. hit on that yet. But, um, so they're learning and they're developing and they're, they're growing and they're, they're um, moving forward as, as young people and as leaders in their own right through these, I'd say, non-traditional kinds of approaches to, to Beautiful. teaching Beautiful. I mean, it's, it's enriching programs mm -hmm. that allow us to teach, as you say, we could teach kids math, mm -hmm. English, science, social studies. We could teach them all. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they get that in school, and we get to add it from a different angle when mm -hmm. they're at the school. One of the things that I am proud of our team is, and our entire team, is that we listen to the community. Yes. And so that is... Even when we're looking at it from a programmatic standpoint, it's what is needed in our community. What is it that our youth want? What does the parents want for our community? And as we continue to grow, we're going to continue to get better to find out what is it that the community wants and how we can stay relevant in today's society. We have about six, just a little bit over six minutes left, and I want to spend selfishly the majority of that time on workforce readiness because it's a, such an important element of what we're doing with our teenagers. The other piece about it is, you know, it's hard to capture a teenager's attention. And we have to do it in ways that make sense to 21st century teens. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we have to get out of our own way as adults to kind of understand how they want to be taught. And uh, the more we get in tune to how they want to be mm -hmm. taught, the better our society, in my opinion, we will be. And so uh, the idea of our workforce readiness, we've been working on this, Dr. Wellman, even when you was on the board. Mm -hmm. And this is very uh, near and dear to our board of directors mm -hmm. as well, is making sure that our programs are relevant they're meeting the needs of our community. And a lot of our board members are community leaders and business people. And they want to be able to have the opportunity to, you know, look at some of our teens too in the mm -hmm. future to be potential employees. And uh, so when I look at our workforce readiness program and the partners that we've built over the years, I just get really excited. We've been working with Children's Services Council for a number of years before we were even talking about workforce mm -hmm. readiness with our junior staff. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of this bored out of it was we would bring junior staff on, we would get a small uh, an, uh, allotment of money mm -hmm. that we could give junior staff dollars so that they can come alongside other uh, staff to learn how to be an employer 
or employee mm -hmm. rather. And so that worked for many years. And then I had had some great conversation with the CEO of, of uh, Children's Service Council, Sean Boyle, to understand how can we enhance that program where it made sense for today. And we evolved to being able to now get funding to do some summer programs where we could pay these young people to work, get good work experience. They're not just working in uh, the clubhouse with kids. They're working with me as a mm -hmm. CEO. They're going to have the opportunity to work with you mm -hmm. as the chief operating officer. They they get to work with uh, the CFO and they mm -hmm. get to work with other marketing. So we have expanded that uh, in a in a big way. And then we go over to Career Source, um, and Career Source has been a great partner of mm -hmm. ours. And so we've had opportunities where we were able to uh, get kids throughout the county and get them working and working for us in the same manner. Uh, we were recognized by Bank of America in one of their grants to be able to do the same thing. And our ultimate goal is, and let me not forget the city of Fort Pierce. I remember calling Nick Mims <laughs> and uh, the city manager and saying, hey, I have this group of kids that could use work, but they really can't leave their neighborhood. But we need to get them work around the neighborhood. And the, the city has been remarkable with us over the last couple of years. And so with all that being said, Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County wants to be able to create an opportunity for kids to work all year long. And we're doing it now, Dr. Wellman, with our food program. You're absolutely right. Um, First of all, I don't know that it's clear, but all of our teens are involved in our workforce readiness program. Yes. And therefore, they're all eligible um, to, to work throughout the community as well as in our clubs for pay. <laughs> we, yes. we pay them to work thanks to, thanks to the many partners that you mentioned. And one of the things uh, that's been a real exciting venture has been our food truck. Uh, the kids learn, the youth learn entrepreneurial skills in terms of working, operating their own business. They learn uh, balancing books and, and, and handling money as well as uh, food safety. They're all safe served certified uh, before they uh, work on the food truck. Uh, these youth, they engage with the public because our food truck is all over the community. Yes. It's at uh, mid Florida, it's in tradition. It's, uh, at the Mets, wherever you look, um, you can find on a weekend uh, our food truck. And, and those kids are working and learning skills. And so it, it's just a phenomenal opportunity that our business, uh, that our partners, community partners, have really made come alive. Because I know with you it was a vision at one time, and now it's a reality. It is. And I tell you, uh, Philip Bush and I had this conversation a couple years ago. Wow. And we were talking about the food truck, and I want to give a quick shout out to Southern Eagle Distributing because they're the ones that helped us pay for that food truck and got us some people to participate with it. But it was, you know, it was them doing that that allowed us to do certain things in terms of getting kids to actually do the work. But it was also other organizations mm -hmm. like a &G Concrete Pools, you know, Travis Leonard and working with Art Allen and other businesses that really were like coming alongside us, letting kids go on the tours of their places. And lot, there's so many business. I have 50 seconds left, so there's so many people that I could mention. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot more to come when it comes to our workforce youth readiness. Correct. And youth of the year, you want to? Yes, that? yes. So um, when you look at the the overall piece where we're at in terms of workforce readiness, that's going to continue. Yes, sir. We have 30 seconds left, and uh, I am so excited with all the things that Dr. Wellman and I have talked about led us to this uh, uh, comment that I'm going to make right now. And, and really with happiness and joy is that our Youth of the Year, Mia Morrison, is now the State Youth of the Year, and we'll be competing at the regional level real soon. Thank you, community, for all the work that you do and know that we appreciate you at the Boys and Girls Clubs. Thank you.